what are the expectations if Burns stays healthy all season this year? Um, anything that Robert Burns gives is is house money, honestly. Um, you know, hopefully he's able to stay healthy for the first time in five years, uh, five or six football seasons. Like I think the last time he was fully healthy was his freshman, maybe sophomore year of high school. Um, and he's a retro sophomore now so he's a third year at miami guys so that's three yeah so this is like five or six years where he's been injury prone uh previously so we'll see what happens um but he does have great size he does have the same athletic traits that made him a four-star borderline five-star caliber player after again he put on an absolute show at the regional uh, nike regional uh down here at american heritage high school as a high school freshman rising sophomore if he can still, I mean, he still has quick feet. He still has size. He's 5'10, 220 pounds. So he's a big back, but he has some wiggle. Uh, there's been some photos or videos released from practice of him, you know, shaking loose of a tackle and running for 15 or 20 yards. Any of that is just house money because Cam Davis and uh, DJ Dallas are going to start. Uh, Lorenzo Lingard, when he gets back healthy, he's going to have to be. I mean, if, if Dallas and Davis, sorry, Harris, excuse me, are one and one A, Lorenzo Lingard needs to be that number two, three, whatever you want to call it after them. And then you sprinkle in a little bit of Robert Burns. So uh, does he have the ability to play here? Yes. Does he have the ability to stay healthy? He has not shown that in any time recently. But if he can, then, yeah, I mean, I think that he could have a role on this offense. But, again, for me, I'm not expecting anything from Robert Burns just because he's been injured so often for such a long consecutive period of time. But if he's able to stay healthy and he's able to contribute, then that's found money. And I'm, I'm good to go with that. Michael Love, we so much appreciate the contribution right there. Um, uh, Cam and I discussed this before we went on tonight. Uh, we, yeah. we both had some, some personal and professional situations and issues this week that didn't really properly prepare us for the Florida versus Miami matchup. Uh, to the to the degree that we would like to discuss it. Sure, right. we, could, we could get on here and fake it and, and do pretty well in discussing the Gators and the Canes and the matchups and, and, and all those good things. But to do it to our standards, uh, we would like to set up an extra time sometime next week. So, of course, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time and then another time throughout the week to set up the Miami defense versus the Florida offense and Gators defense versus the Miami offense with Jaron Williams at the controls. So, Michael, we appreciate uh, the question there but, and appreciate uh, your contribution each and every week. But, uh, well, true. All of that is, is true. So we will dive into like a full just preview episode. Uh, we'll, we'll set up another time next week. But I will address this question from Michael Love. With Florida coming up so quickly, what are the concerns uh, going into the game beyond the offensive line? How much of the playbook do you think that Miami is going to try? Honestly, I just want to see Miami embodying the enthusiasm of the new staff. I want them to to perform to the level that, you know, we all greatly aspire. Um, so just just that, you know, just being settled, everybody buying into their roles and then executing. Um, and there, you know, are some people who um, that is a big question mark for. Um, some of those people like, you know, um, don't aren't going to play. You know, I think uh, it was proven to be true that when Manny Diaz said, you know, some guys on offense got that glazed over look when things went bad in the scrimmage. I mean, I don't know that for certain, but it seems like that was pointing at Nikosi Perry. Nikosi Perry is not going to start. So, you know, Jaron Williams is going to be there. So, uh, you know, there's some other guys in some other positions that, you know, I think are a little bit um, suspect in their past performance. So they're going to need to step it up. Uh, so that's the thing that I'm concerned about. Uh, and then just how the team is going to react when something goes wrong. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, that, that, don't quit poem. You know, when things go wrong as they sometimes will, uh, because it will happen. You know, this is not going to be um, playing NCAA 13 on freshman where you have 900 yards of total offense and 93 points and your opponent has, you know, zero points and negative 500 yards of offense. That's not going to happen. You know, Florida, they do have scholarship players over there. You know, they have over 50 percent. Um, blue chip ratio. So they have some top end talents. You know, you got guys uh, on offense who can make things shake. They got guys on defense who might even have an advantage uh, against who they're going against. So they're going to make plays and Miami is going to have to bounce back. But I want to see what that mental fortitude is like. I want to see how the reaction happens when a negative situation occurs what happens after that? That's what I'm really looking to uh, looking to see and looking to, to to find out about this team because you know you can you can do the mat drills, you can run in the sand, you can run on hills, you can lift, you can yell, you can scream, you can you know do all the things that you want to do 
on a practice field in an offseason situation. But when those lights come on and something goes wrong, how are you going to react? Mike Tyson once said, everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. What happens for Miami when they get hit in the mouth? Because I think that that's going to happen. Florida wants to come out and win this game. Miami wants to come out and win this game. And the same thing for Florida as well. Like, we're going to hit them with a haymaker. Like, do they stumble? Do they get knocked down? Do they get knocked out? But the reaction to things going in a way that they are not necessarily planning on, a coverage breakdown or a missed tackle or a turnover or something like that, how does either team react? That's one of the things that I'm definitely watching next Saturday. Yeah, even at this high level of uh, collegiate football, there are kids that have to see the field each and every year for major, major programs, especially in game one, that aren't necessarily at the preparedness that the coaching staff would like them, but they are just forced into that situation to put very talented kids, but somewhat unprepared that have only seen maybe a few reps in certain situations to see how they're going to prepare and how they're going to be ready and respond to certain situations that uh, maybe they didn't get a ton of reps uh, to, to, to see during practices because of the limited aspect of a collegiate schedule versus we're not talking the NFL with all the preseason games and that being a sole job for each individual.